Hello class and welcome to the third of our web design stay at home videos. Uh, today we're going to talk about a few things. The first one's going to be just mentioning that the new assignment is now online. Uh, the next one will be talking a little bit about styling links. And then the other one will be talking about how to start creating your about and contact pages. Shouldn't be too difficult and should be pretty straightforward. So the first thing, just to let you know, is that, of course, uh, the next project, Responsive Accessible Professional Site, is now online. Uh, you can find links to it on the quick links. You can see it also on the course uh, page for the calendar for today. It's also on the major projects uh, page of the website. Um, pretty basically, for this uh, assignment, we are going to be expanding out from our uh, portfolio page. We're going to be creating a front page. Uh, which is going to consist of uh, a full screen image or if you want to give it a try after you get your image working a video uh, that will be a full screen image for that will be different images for your phone and your tablet and your uh, your computer screen uh, those images will tell a story about who you are just based on someone seeing the image themselves uh, we're also going to have an about page we're going to have a portfolio, I'm sorry, the, por the portfolio page, and then a contact page. Um, we'll be using a form that we're going to design using um, a free website called Wufu. Um, and we are going to have at least four portfolio items in our portfolio. Um, your site is now going to have at least three different CSS documents. The main CSS, which I'd like you to continue to use to style your about page and your portfolio, your portfolio page and your contact page. Uh, you'll also have an imagehome.css, which is going to style just your home pages. And you're also going to have a navigate nav.css, which will style your navigation bar. So yes, we're going to be including a navigation bar in these pages as well, um, as well as putting a footer in. And we have plenty of time to be able to do that. We're going to go through it step by step. Um, just like the other assignment, your pages will be, uh, will have three different screen stylings, 320, 768, 1024. However, if you want to have more than that for this, uh, for this project, you certainly can. Uh, the specifics are pretty much the same as the other ones. It must be accessible. It has to use Valas tagging, open, you know, uh, have your reset style sheet. It should be clean coded. Uh, and so on. Okay, um, there are ways to go beyond what is required. And I'd like you to take a look at that. Some of them, um, you can have a image carousel. You can custom style an error page. You can create a case study for a portfolio item that walks readers and uh, users through your design process. Something that people really like to see. Uh, multiple pages for types of portfolio items. I know people have already started doing that actually. Um, embedding relevant social media, creating custom styles for your Wufu form, replacing your full screen images on your index page with uh, videos, um, coding multiple uh, media queries beyond the ones that are required for 324, 80, 600, 760, 800, and 1024. Okay? And anything else you're interested in trying out, uh, you can give all those things a try. Uh, something to go beyond what is required which as you know is necessary for the story of learning. And here are your due dates. The first rough draft is due April 20th. The second rough draft uh, will be due around 427 and we'll be having large, uh, longer conferences uh, for those. And um, then the final draft and reflections will be due. We'll figure to see how things are going, okay? Uh, these conferences are the last week of class. That's week 16. Uh, they will be held Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of that week, okay? And shoot me an email if you have any questions about anything on this page. Uh, again, you can find it by going to the quick links, Project 2, Responsive Accessible Professional Site. It is also in the, on the major projects page, and it's also on the course account. All right, so I'd like to start talking about links and styling your links, because we haven't gone over that yet. Uh, we just didn't have a chance to before everything moved on offline. I mean, out of the classroom and online. So you'll see that I have a link here on my page, and it's pretty generic. This is what the default, let me make it a little bigger. This is what the default link looks like uh, you know, for your browsers, this blue underlined thing. But it doesn't need to be that way. Uh, in your code, you can style your links. 
You can style the basic link how you want to look on the page when someone goes there. You can style how it is visit looks when it is visited. That is, uh, the browser will remember when you visited a page, so it, it could show a different color or something else uh, for vid links that you have gone to in the past. Uh, you can show what it will look like when it's hovered. That is, when your, your mouse has uh, hovered over it. And you can show what it looks like when it is active. Okay, so that means when someone is actually pressing down on it. And each one of these things can be styled. Um, in order for these to work, they actually need to be in this order. Link, visited, hover, active. And you can think of this as the acronym um, love it. Okay. Um, you can think of it this as this acronym for love for the L, V for visited, H for hover, and A for active. It's sort of the trick to remember what order to put those in. So for my um, for my link, let's say that I want it, the color to be, I'm just going to make this purple to uh, be able to see it. And um, no. okay. And for my hover, I like to sort of style it in a different order. Hover. Here, cornflower blue text decoration underline. Okay. Uh, active color let's say I wanna when it's active, let's try putting background color in. Choose uh, antique white, see if that works. And I want the text. Run. And then for my visited color, I'll just do color. I'm just going to do a lighter color of purple. Let's say, just do dark orange just for fun. Okay. So this is what we expect the link to look like. We expect it to be purple colored with a text decoration uh, um, none. So that means no underlining. Um, Color for visited, it means that if we go back to it another time, will be dark orange. Text for hovering will have color change with a different underline. And then when I click on it, I want to see a little background color. Okay. Let me save that, upload it, styles folder, here, refresh. Okay. So now we can see that's purple. If I hover over it, it changes, right? If I click on it, we see that the background color appears, and it's going to take me to St. Joe's. Uh, I'll come back, and now we can see the visited color has changed to orange, okay, just like we wanted to. Now, when I hover over it again, it will turn that dark, I'm sorry, if I hover over it again, it will turn that cornflower blue with the underline. If I click on it, it will have the background color, and like I said, go to the page. I put this in the main area uh, because this is going to be how I'd like it to appear across all different screen sizes. I do not need to replicate this as we're, I'm going forward into uh, the other ones because just to make sure things aren't redundant on the page. However, if you do want to change anything based on your individual screen sizes, all you have to do is make something a little bit different over here. Uh, but there really isn't much need to do that as long as you've got the color scheme down. That's great. People have been asking about how can I start integrating some of the colors from my, their design personas, uh, because a lot of the pages now are pretty black and white, and we're looking for ways to add some accent colors. Your navigation bar will be one place to do that. Uh, your links are now another place to do that as well. So if I had other links on my page, you know, I just have this one, but you'll see that it will start. It would start to add some color uh, to the pages themselves. Okay. All right. And if you have questions about that, please uh, do send me an email, of course. Okay, so what I'd like to do is I'd like to um, start up talking about uh, creating your about pages and your uh, contact pages. Okay, uh, we're going to be using the same template that we're using for the portfolio page uh, that I have provided. Um, we're going to be using the same style sheet that we're going to be that was in that document and also the same 
uh, Google fonts, I imagine, are going to be on those pages as well, so that you have a consistent theme and design going across all your pages. Now, if you go to websites online, everything is consistent in terms of their layouts and the design look. So it is very easy to actually create your About page and your Contact page. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go to File, Save As. I'm currently in my portfolio.html. I'm going to go to File, Save As. And I'm going to just call this page now about.html. Okay. And I'm going to change my title so I know here um, that this is about Bill Wolf. Okay. And I will save that again. To show that the portfolio page is still there, I will go to open and open my portfolio page. And so I can see that the portfolio page is still there, Bill's portfolio. Okay. Now what I'm going to do with my About page, I'm going to go File, Save As, Contact, .html. Okay, I'm going to say Contact Bill Wolf. And I'm going to go and open my About page that I created before. So now I have, I can put these in sort of this sort of order. Um, I have my about page, about Bill Wolf, the contact page, contact Bill Wolf, and I have my portfolio page, three pages. Okay. And you'll notice that the about page still, because it was uh, saved from your portfolio, it has already the link to the style sheet that we need and also has our links to our Google fonts. Same for our contact page, link to the style sheet that we need and link to our Google Fonts. Okay. Um, however, on my contact and about page, I do not need, for example, all my photography, right? I don't need that. Okay. Like right now on the portfolio page, I have my photography and I have this fun uh, cat video, which I always like to, to show. <laughs> this just cracks me up. <laughs> okay, um, so, uh, but I don't need this on my about page, clearly, right? So I can go to my about page and I can delete all of this. Okay. Now I don't want to delete the body tag. I want to make sure the body and the closing body and the closing HTML tag are, is I'd like this personal statement to be that was on the portfolio page to stay now on the about page because this is really about who you are. It's not really con completely connected to your portfolio. So I'm going to save that and I'm going to remove a whole of the statement from my portfolio page. And my portfolio page is now going to have my photography. Now I do recommend that you, before this, uh, include a brief statement Uh, basically summarizing your summarizing your portfolio like what you're gonna what can be in it uh, if you want uh, that could be something you could add you could also just have it say my photography or my portfolio um, and let that speak for itself okay so I leave that up to you um, I would like you to not do this too quickly I have to grade your site still so um, if you could leave that in for a little while so I could just make sure I'm looking over your portfolio pages uh, and I'll let you know when you can delete that, that those statements, that would be, that would be wonderful. Okay. Um, so I'm going to put that back for now just to have it back in there. There we go. Okay. And so now on my about page, I've got this statement. Uh, you're probably going to want to include a photo of yourself. Um, you could do your div class left and right, so your photo is on the left side, and the this um, the document the uh, summary of who you are is on the right side. Something like that looks nice, and I leave that sort of up to you how you want to design uh, your uh, portfolio. I'm sorry, your about page, and you could just use your div class left and right, just as you have done uh, on your portfolio page. Okay, and. This is my contact page. And the contact page 
we don't need any of this stuff, right? We just sort of need our name on there so people know which page we've got. So I'm going to delete all of it. Boom, it's gone. And I'm going to put a little note for myself. Include contact form here. Okay. Save that. So now I have a portfolio page that has personal statement, uh, the photography and the photography and my video on it. I've got my about page, which so far just has this personal statement on it. And I have a contact page, which is going to be blank except for my name, but will include a contact form. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to upload those pages, my about, contact, and the portfolio. Now I can go to my site, refresh this, it shouldn't look any different. But I can also type into the browser about.html and we can see that my statement is there just as it should. And I can type in contact.html and this is what it should look like, completely blank. So we have now three pages. We have contact, about, and portfolio. Uh, we don't have a navigation bar yet, most of us. So we don't have links to these pages, uh, but you can just pop in very quickly if you want onto your portfolio page on each of these pages, actually links to the other ones if you want to. Um, that way it's just easy to get back and forth until we create our navigation bar later in the week. Like Wednesday I'll have the, the video for that. If you have questions about any of that, let me know. Okay, So pretty straightforward. Um, Okay, let's talk about the contact page now. Uh, I'd like you to go to a, a place called Wufu. It's completely free. Uh, we've actually read about this when we were reading about emotional design. And this is a very easy to use, free contact form. Uh, essentially what you do is you create a, a form. You embed the code just like you would embed a video code or any other kind of code in your page. And you can style it a little bit and you can create this your, your your form field and it's very easy once you've created your your page you just click on new form and i would just call this uh bills for you know, professional contact form let's see if i can make this bigger yeah and this is my form, and so you here you would have a little description say, hey, and okay. Uh, in your design persona, you remember you comp compose some language for your sites. This will be one of the places where you can start having that sort of contact language in. Um, you could say where you want it, the title, and all that other kind of stuff. You like IP addresses, I don't really like to do that. Um, confirmation. Great. Uh, to customize your confirmation message, you have to have a pro account, which I don't want you to do. Uh, always show a CAPTCHA, okay, and so on. Um, that's great. So now you can start adding your form fields. Okay. And so if I want people to have their name, I just drag it across. And I definitely want their email address, so I'm going to put that in there also. And I want a place where they can um, contact me. Okay. Now I can click on this and say, you know, what's your message? Okay. Email, name, first and last. I can make it required. Some of these things we do want to be required so that people will definitely fill it out. Um, I can put instructions in there if I want. These are for accessibility purposes. Please add your, oops. I'm sorry, that's the placeholder text. Uh, Pre-find that. Please add your message here. Okay. 
Now you can do some CSS keywords in here if you want to, that you can click on this link to find out what that's all about. I'm actually gonna change this, uh, so please. Something like that, okay. You can save the form. And I can click on share form. I want to embed with iframe, okay? I'm going to copy the code, go to brackets, go to contact.html, I'm going to delete this instructions I left for myself, and I'm going to paste it in. <laughs> it just paste, it always pastes in just so terribly ugly. I don't know why it does that. But you can adjust this, okay? One thing that I do want to highlight is this height, okay, right here. Um, this height, for some reason, this 511 height is not going to be big enough for your forms. In a lot of, in a lot of places, it is going to get cut off. So what I'd like you to do is change it at first to like a thousand, okay? And if that becomes too big, you can, you can change it. Now, another thing that you're gonna need to add for this so that, well, I'll show you what things look like first. I'll save that, go here, refresh, re-upload my contact page. And I can go to contact.html, refresh it, and there is my contact form, okay? Now, I don't like how wide it is on here. Um, so what I'm gonna wanna do is create a division in my code to constrain it a little bit. So I'm gonna go do class equals, I'm gonna call it form box, because it's gonna be a box that I'm creating to keep the form in. Go down underneath. And form box, okay. And then save. And in my main.css, I can now, I'll start in the computer screen, uh, create here, dot form box. And I just want to give it a, a width, let's say, Eighty percent, and margin. And hopefully that will constrain it a little bit, so it's not so wide. And I might even, now that I'm looking at it, make it sixty percent. Upload the content page. Do the name. And let's see what happens. Okay. And now it is much more constrained within underneath my, my heading. Um, so it's much, much nicer for people to be able to contact, uh, contact me there. Okay. And so that's pretty great. Pretty basic form, and this is perfectly fine. I don't need you to do more than that. Uh, like I said, if you want to do some custom styling uh, in here or create your own theme for your for your pages, uh, for your contact form, that is completely up to you. That would be something that's going beyond what is required. Uh, you can, uh, if, and you'll see, go back here, if you go to forms, please contact me, I can go to edit. Uh, and go from there. If you do want to create your own themes, which would be custom styling, custom fonts, custom all those kinds of things, uh, you can go under this themes area and you can create uh, a new one, okay? And you could add, for example, you can choose different topography for your titles, uh, for your descriptions, for your text, you could choose the colors, 
sorry, the colors, the fonts, they don't have all of the fonts that we're using, the Google font, they use Typekit here. Um, but if you have a Typekit ID, you can pop it in there. There's also ways to create custom CSS for your forms. Um, and there's, I would look up online how to do that. It's a little bit complicated. You're not required to do it, but it's something that you feel like you want to do. You certainly can. Uh, once you create this theme and save it under your forms, you can go to edit form and I believe there's a way to apply a theme. For example, you can apply the theme down here and then the, the colors and, and the fonts that you've chosen will apply specifically to it. Okay. Again, not required, but something that a lot of students do like to do. So that's the video for this week. I'd like you to work on this Monday through Wednesday. On Wednesday, I'm going to be providing you with a much more involved uh, video, maybe breaking up into two videos, uh, how to do the navigation, and also how to uh, do your front page image. I'll be having template code for you for that, and uh, so on. Okay. If you have any questions, please let me know, and um, I'll talk to you all soon. Have a great have a great day. Bye-bye.